Hi. <laughs> I um, I don't know if this is gonna stay. It could fall down. I'm trying to finish the the my vlog video. Okay. So, I I stopped my last one by mistake, by accident. I didn't mean to end it. Oof, fuck. Okay. And then this is this is how dresses. Like, it's too much openage there happening. So, talking about my friend. And I didn't know what to do. Because he has... Okay, so let me just continue on. Okay, so this is just the second part to my last video about my friend, my awakening, my friend, part two, but I'm eating my breakfast and it's really good. I'm really hungry. So if I talk while I'm chewing, just think of my second husband. He used to do it all the time and blow his nose while I was eating at the table. I grew up, my family was really strict about what we did at the table, the dinner table. It was really tense. So, I might, I might still be doing that to myself. Like, Mark, my second husband, he really helped, like, change me, relax me. I was always tense because we had all these rules in my house. My family had all these rules. You didn't burp. You didn't fart. You weren't angry. This is probably one of them. So. That's very oppressive. That's conditional love. That's control and manipulation. So I don't need to live that way anymore. with these rules that you're judged and you're banished from love if you don't follow them. I am not a little kid anymore. I do not live in my parents' home. I do not have to follow their rules. I love myself unconditionally now and I value myself. Um, a bigger house doesn't mean better friend or better character or loyalty or integrity or respect. Hmm. The more I eat, the hungrier I get. So, this type of boob boobage view is new for me. Okay? But this is a dress I recently bought. And I have other dresses just like it. So this is normal now. Ah, uh, I've been wanting this coffee. I did a, a that lift ride. It was only a like five minute ride, but mm. I was thinking about hot my hot coffee. I love my coffee. I get dark roast from Amazon, these samplers. Like, it's a whole box full of all different types of dark roast cu curry cups. It is the bomb, 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 bomb. One of my favorite things about it is that it's like a, it's like a sample box. So, there's every different type of coffee in there. Entenmann's to Kahlua to, you know, different brands to Starbucks, to whatever, and it's all dark, different dark roasts. So it's all different brands, so every day is a new, I love it. It's changed my life. <laughs> I know, but simple little things like fucking having an awesome coffee at your disposal. I, I, I have always had to buy coffee out, mm, excuse me, because my home coffee game sucked. 
by Amazon and these dark roast curry cup sampler boxes with all these different varieties is fucking amazing. I know, I can't stop looking at my boobs. <laughs> I've never seen this view of them. I've never done this. So, mm, let me enjoy my, oh, and I also put mushroom powder in my coffee. Oh my God, it takes it to a whole other level. Uh, excuse me, my burps. My burps are spiritual. <laughs> they are. Mm -mm -mm. Um, they're about freedom, honey. So, let me continue to eat and go back to my story. Where was I? Okay. No, honey. You can't come up here. I love her though. So, my friend, wait, he upset me because he brought a female into our relationship without respecting me and talking to me. I mean, it's just not okay. We were strictly like brother-sister. But it's okay because I still valued him as a friend. I did. I valued since 15. Nobody liked him. I loved him. Okay. You want your girlfriend now to be... You want this? This? Okay. So, you know, I'm an unconditional lover. At least I try to be. I do my best. I'm not perfect. I'm human too. So, okay, um, should I say that? Okay, well, I started doing my live videos, my live readings on TikTok. Well, early out, when I first started doing them, somebody came on my live and said, do you know a guy named Pete? I said, yeah. They said, oh, by the way, this is Pete. I didn't, now I just screwed up everything because now everybody knows his name and you're going to know who I'm talking about and he's going to know it too. But is that my problem? I was trying to protect his identity, but I don't even know why. So, by the time this gets to him, he might even be dead and he, you know, whatever. So, so, she said, do you know a guy named Pete? And I didn't even know her. Like, some random stranger comes up to me and starts talking to me, me about a lifetime long friend. Like, fuck, get the fuck out of here. But it, I was like, yeah. Yeah, I don't feel right about this video anymore. All right, I'm just going to keep going. See, I'm loyal to it. So, and now his name is out there. And anybody that knows me will know who I'm talking about, probably pretty much. So, whatever. I can't, I didn't try to be this, but I don't care. I'm out here, he's out here, whatever. So, right, so she says, um, he needs you. I said, who are you? And that's, that's like... I don't know you, and you can't just talk to him into my life like that. I didn't give you permission. I didn't. I didn't ask for a reading or anything like that. So she says he needs you. So I call him right because then I just like, well, what the fuck if he needs me? But then I was like, he's a grown ass man. If he needs me, he can call me. But I still called him to check on him. We talked for a while. You know, his birthday came by just about a week ago, less than that, maybe. And on his birthday, you know, I texted him happy birthday and all that. But I got a reading that day for a dead guy named Pete, Peter. I thought that was really like a sign or significant that this dead guy was named Pete. And I did a reading for his girlfriend. His name is Peter on my friend Pete's birthday. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Well, okay. So I called him, my friend Pete, and I said, oh, I just, you know, of course. I, it was your, because we had texted happy birthday and stuff, but called him. Hey, I did this reading for a guy named Pete on your birthday. That's pretty damn cool. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just chatting. 
talking about life and he still ha he still meets with the guys that he was best friends with in high school and he's telling me that he still keeps in touch with all of them and he sees them regularly and he's with this girl I mean I don't know if I should say her name but whatever you know and I have no problem with him having a girlfriend or anything like that but just keep our friendship you know what I mean so that's all cool it's still my friend you know what I mean we're talking I'm happy my heart is getting warm because this is my old friend well then he calls me Sunday night in a weird way and he was drinking I believe but he says that his girlfriend is in another room so he's got to be quiet and keep be here for her but she's having family issues so he was like giving her some space or whatever but he was still going to be aware that she might need him all right cool I was driving down to my twin flames so I talked to him for the whole hour on the road and it gave me something to do while I was driving on the road I don't you know it's a long drive it's an hour long and I value my friend so we're talking and he's says I, I'm gonna I just sent you a text we're on the phone and you're texting me I'm driving but I still did it well, I opened the text and it says are you by I said I just read your text message by my bi. Am I bisexual? No, not at all. Why did you text that to me, dude? This is sketchy ass behavior. What the hell are you doing? And what are you talking about? Why are you doing this? Right? That's what's in my head. So we're talking about not nothing. You know, old high school friends, guys, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like real, like, oh my God, this is so hard for me to have my boob, like, so exposed. I feel naked. So... Then he texts me again and said, I just sent you another text. It's, I can't, I can't really say it. So he says, you have nice tits. He's never done anything like that. So that might not be a big deal to some women. Like, okay, no big deal. Never happened to be in our whole relationship. And now he has a whole girlfriend that I know that I respect. And he's hitting on me. I, I take that as hitting on me. I don't know. Maybe that's not. Why are you sending me a sketchy ass task text if it's not something secret or wrong? Like it's so that was really bothering me. Like that's really disrespectful. I'm like a sister to fucking you. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, a while ago, two years ago, I, I'm on his Facebook. So I'm going to back pedal, going to back up. Two years ago, I get a, a messenger message from him about two years ago saying um, he wanted to borrow money from me. He wanted me to come over. He was being all sexy like. Like it wasn't come over as a friend. It was like, it was, I could, it was a text message, but I can, I had no energy. And it was all coming on to me. It was all sexy and hooking up. And it was sort of like he needed me. Oh, there was that needing. And then he was like, wouldn't have borrowed money from me. Talked, and he mentioned his kids, which he has kids. And then he mentioned high school. I said, this isn't Pete. Who the fuck is this? This is not Pete. Well, he mentioned our old high school friends that we had, mutual friends. And he mentioned them by name. Okay, so it was Pete. It just was off. It wasn't Pete. So the next day, he sends this big Facebook thing saying his account was hacked. And if he had, if anybody had any contact with him in the past 24 hours, it wasn't him. And he really apologized. It was fucking him. And I knew that, but I just, whatever. Okay. So fast forward to this past Sunday. But then it gets even more bizarre. He starts telling me things about two people that I know and that he knows. And one, I didn't even know he knew really, is my husband. And he starts talking and putting him down and being really bad. He tells, he says that my husband is a pimp and he has drug addicts as prostitutes and he beats them. And that it's public knowledge. I said, what the hell are you talking about? Public knowledge. I said, Mark might be a drug addict, but he's never done what you're saying been a pimp and beat on women and what what do you mean how is it public knowledge oh it's in public records what the hell are you talking about 
And then we have a mutual friend that we went to high school with that he hates for some reason. And his name is Michael. And I said, oh, yeah, I'd hate to be on your bad side. You really hate, don't you? And I said, what about Michael? I was kind of... And then he goes on this whole thing. Yeah, Michael's a scammer. He scams money off of women. And he has a whole girlfriend. I was like, what are you talking about? Michael is just a... He's a He's just a lonely man. And he's sweet, but he's an alcoholic. Like, he drinks way too much, and he's destroying himself, and he gets really stupid when he gets drunk. But it's not... It's just... It's more of a pathetic... It's, like, than a, than a danger. He doesn't scam women. He just is lonely and wants to hook up with a woman and wants a girlfriend. So, you know what I mean? But he lives with his son, and in, in, in his in his marriage house, you know, a house from when he was married. So this is really bizarre. Pete's really saying some really bizarro things that are not real and reality. And his personality is totally changed. And I'm like concerned about him. I'm I'm upset the way he treated me, but now I'm also concerned about him, his girlfriend, his whole life that he's in some kind of alternate reality. Is it dementia from alcoholism? Is it he had a head injury years ago and I'm, what we weren't in contact, but he literally fell and had a whole brain injury and had to rehabilitate and have, and I, I don't really know. I thought, should I contact a friend of his and talk? Should I contact her? Like, I don't want bad to happen to her. I don't want bad to happen to him. And, but I don't know. I think I should just, whatever, let this thing play out, whatever. It's not my problem. It's his. So, I don't know. I'm just recording this because I didn't know what the hell to do. And I didn't want to go to his friend. And has, like, his high school friends I don't talk to anymore. So, that would be weird for me to reach out to them through Facebook and say, hey, what's going on? But maybe I should. I care. I'm still his friend. And this is bizarre, 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 bizarre behavior. So, now you know. I unburdened myself. This, I can't carry heaviness and anxiety and depression and fear and not knowing what to do and feel responsible for this man. I love him and I care. And hopefully I'll know exactly what to do and have clarity about it and confidence. I'm not trying to hurt him. I'm not trying to shame him. He's kind of doing it to himself. I'm trying to help him, but I don't know how without entangling I'm not trying to get entangled with his so I am a dignified woman even though this is weird to me this feels undignified having half a boob out but apparently this is like the style I mean you know so I am an honorable dignified woman and and I'm awakening and I'm seeing that money doesn't give character a big house doesn't a big D doesn't, a big dick doesn't, like, you are who you are, as far as a good person, a funny person, a person of integrity, um, and I'm seeing that he wasn't who I thought he was, all, you know, so I should just let him go, because he's not who I thought he was anyway, um, that's the awakening part, and, um, the reality that he is isn't really reality he's in some alternate reality and that's really not my problem and it's his right he can have that 